Earth's extinction events are in many ways still mysterious. While some are strongly linked to certain events in geologic history, other events were more ambiguous and the reasons for them not fully understood. The most well-known space-related mass extinction, of course, was that of the dinosaurs, when an asteroid impacting roughly in the area of the Yucatan Peninsula of today wiped out a large amount of life on Earth, ending the Cretaceous period. But one surprising aspect of that is that the crater isn't readily evident, visually, today, 66 million years later, because Earth is very good at filling in and weathering impact craters. This is the case for most of Earth's impact structures, and the ones that are well preserved are recent, notably Behringer Crater in Arizona which is only about 50,000 years old, and Wolf Creek Crater in Australia which is thought to be no older than 120,000 years as of this time, though not long ago it was placed at 300,000 years old. But one of the major question marks about impact craters are those under ice. There are suspected buried craters in Greenland, but one area of particular interest is Antarctica, which as a full continent may have a number of buried craters we aren't yet aware of, but there are candidates, including a very large one. Notice the Wilkes Land Crater Hypothesis. It's based originally on work done by Richard A. Schmidt in 1962, based on seismic data and what appeared to be a gravitational anomaly. Schmidt actually suspected that if this was a large impact structure, it may solve a mystery that's still open to this day. One of the world's great tektite fields stretches across Australia and Asia, and while in modern times it's generally agreed that tektites are an impact glass, the actual source of the impact glass remains unclear to this day. This is particularly interesting because the tektites are thought to be about 790,000 years old meaning that we really should see an impact crater, but one is not readily evident. This is not the case with all other tektite strewn fields on Earth. They are all linked to known craters, but not the absolutely enormous Australasian strewn field, which is thought to extend even into Antarctica, and there may be a reason for that. The gravity anomaly here, which are hallmarks of impact events in some cases, coincided with a depression under the ice about 243 kilometers wide. Whether this is indeed a crater buried under the ice remains unknown. But there's a second mystery here in roughly the same region of Antarctica, known as Wilkes Land in eastern Antarctica, and actually was the backdrop for part of the 1998 X-Files movie. This other mystery may also be a crater. It's called the Wilkes Landmass Concentration and was first noted in 2006. They found a 300 kilometer wide mass concentration, another gravity anomaly detection, that is centered inside a larger ring-like structure, like a crater rim, that can be seen in radar images beneath the ice. This would yield a crater 480 kilometers wide. This is very large. The dinosaur killer crater is only about 180 kilometers or so. But mass concentrations can be caused by volcanism or even mantle plumes from beneath the Earth, and given that this structure is buried deep under the East Antarctic Ice Sheet, we have no direct samples. To get down to rock in this region, you have to drill through over 2 kilometers of ice. But the evidence we do have seems to support that it's an impact crater. But to make the size of a crater, the asteroid here would have been as much as five times the size of the end Cretaceous asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Because of the sheer size of this, it would seem like a good candidate for an extinction event. So if it's a crater, then when did this happen? The team that discovered it noted that mass concentrations sort of dissipate over time. Geology moves and mixes and the like so the crater must have been formed within the last 500 million years. But there is evidence of a rift running through the crater that formed only 100 million years ago as a product of continental drift, meaning that the crater must be older than that. So this one is not likely to have created the Australasian tektites. It's even possible, according to some researchers involved, that the impact actually may have contributed in some way to continental drift by weakening the Earth's crust at this point. It's worth noting here that the time frame for the formation of this crater, if it is one, does line up very roughly, we're talking a 400 million year span here to be clear, with a date of 251.9 million years ago, 
which saw the end of Permian extinction, better known as the Great Dying, by far the worst extinction event this planet has ever seen. This apocalypse killed 81% of marine species on this world and large swaths of land life. But the problem is that this extinction event seems to have common pulses and is somewhat strongly linked to the Siberian Traps, which was a massive volcanic event. So if it's related somehow, it would only have been a contributing factor, seemingly. And there are other complications there, in that this impact candidate is not the only one potentially linked to this huge extinction event. But it gets weirder and maybe more complicated than this so far. Reconstructions show that the impact structure in Wilkesland would have been directly antipodal to the Siberian traps. They were exactly on the opposite sides of the Earth from each other in those days. This digs into a somewhat contentious and controversial theory that impact events, if they are large enough, can trigger episodes of volcanism on the other side of the impacted body. But ultimately, it remains unknown what effect this impact or another candidate impact crater off the coast of Australia had in playing a role because frankly, we don't know exactly when these features actually formed. The ages of the structures need to be constrained much further than they are, along with determining if they are indeed impact craters. But now it's gotten even more complicated and brings us to news on another type of space-related extinction event. In a paper by Alexis Quintana and colleagues, link in the description below, they detail a new correlation between extinction events on Earth and a completely different astronomical phenomenon than an asteroid. Here, it is a supernova. Exploding stars are some of the most energetic events in the universe, and if you get one close to Earth, say within 60 light years, it would strip the ozone layer off this planet almost instantly, allowing the sun's ultraviolet light in unfiltered, which would cause a mass extinction. The researchers used data from the Gaia satellite to look at a sampling of 24,000 highly luminous stars, and then focused on the ones closest to the Sun, within just over 3,000 light years to create a model of the history of nearby star formation and massive stars. This allowed them to determine a rate at which supernovae occurred nearby. Lo and behold, the rate actually correlates with two unexplained mass extinctions on Earth. Specifically, this is the late Devonian extinctions from about 372 million years ago, which killed about 40% of marine species. And incidentally, the oceanic anoxia it caused is responsible for much of the oil reserves of the US and Canada, and also the late Ordovician mass extinction of about 443 million years ago that was a pulsed extinction that was devastating on marine life. And there may be evidence of something related here that points to nearby supernovae. One is the discovery of iron 60 and snow deposits in Antarctica, and also on the surface of the moon, which point towards a local supernova having happened at some point. But the real question here is the ozone layer. Destroying the ozone layer itself is dangerous, which we no longer are, and the infamous ozone hole is healing. But ozone loss is especially dangerous to marine life that lives close to the surface of the oceans. There was an event around 2.6 million years ago that hit marine mammals, birds, and even sharks that seems to have been due to a depletion of the ozone layer. A supernova nearby may fit the bill for that one. The researchers found that within close proximity to Earth, remember the solar system not only orbits the galactic center, but has its own motion, as do all stars in the galaxy, and they often come into contact with each other in close encounters and then separate. The supernova rate is about 2 to 2.5 supernovae per billion years nearby Earth. Given that this lines up generally with several mass extinctions, then supernovae may have been a contributing factor in them. But once you upset the apple cart, these things tend to cascade and pulse as secondary effects take effect, prolonging the extinction period. Thankfully, we are currently nowhere even close to a star that could damage the Earth through a supernova, and on human time scales, it's not even likely you would even witness one inside the Milky Way, at least in a lifetime. But it does show how dynamically related the solar system is to the rest of the galaxy and indeed the universe. Our planet is not divorced from the asteroids of the solar system, or for that matter, interstellar asteroids. Nor is it divorced from more distant but immensely powerful astronomical phenomena like a supernova, even though the sun itself cannot produce one of those. 
While these events may not happen to us living on Earth today, one has to wonder if something like this didn't happen to some intelligent alien civilization somewhere out there, somewhere in time, leaving only the ruins of what once was a civilization. Thanks for listening, I'm futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently musing about Antarctica again. It's tough. Asteroid impacts, continental drift, turning it from a lush forest with dinosaurs into a frozen wasteland, and now it's covered in penguins. It's had a rough go of things, but trudges on, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.